Hey, welcome back everyone. So in today's video, I got a special treat for you. I'll be demonstrating some Ohuhu markers. So they were kind enough to share this uh, magnificent set with us here on the channel so that I can demonstrate them for you. What is that? I gotta get that off. What is that? I don't know what that is. Anyways, um, look at this gorgeous set of wonderful markers. So pretty, so beautiful. I can't wait to get my hands in there and just have some fun. So without further ado, let's jump in and try these bad boys out. So just so you know, this is actually a printout from the artwork I did in the previous video. Uh, so it is printed on Bristol Board Smooth, just a type of board I like to use. It's 200 series. Uh, the difference is I am working off a copy, but then none of the ink smears from the markers, which is nice. For me, this seems to be a good way to kind of combine the sketch with the digital inks and then now traditional color. Um, so yeah, so what I'll do is I'll start with... Uh, I guess I'll start with this area right here. And so I've already pre-picked out my colors. Now what I would recommend with these is that you basically uh, fill out those little color swatches that it comes with. Uh, they look like this. I didn't do them all, I'm kind of lazy. I'll do them as I go. But you really need to see the color uh, on the paper um, next to each other before you make any decisions because they just, they do not match the marker caps. I'll tell you that, at least I don't think they do. I'm not the greatest with color anyways, but what I'm going to do here is I, I usually keep like a little piece off to the side to test on, put that under here, and, uh, and then I'll go from there. So, but I know I picked these three right here for the gray, so I'm going to do the gray suit here. So what I'm going to do is take this, it's got a little tinge of blue in there, let's call it cool gray. That's a little bit lighter, that's what I'm looking for. And then this should be the darker one. There we go. Okay, so what I wanna do, at least the way that I do it, and you know, always check multiple sources for your, your reference there, but, uh, or your, you know, your ways of getting things done. But what I like to do is base color it with this lighter color. Got my camera there. And if you're gonna do any blending, then it uh, seems to work best wet on wet. So you have to move relatively fast. That's why it's also good to have these colors just you know, ready to rock right next to you. Sometimes you'll want them both in, the, in your hand as you go so that you can quickly jump. So for instance, I'm gonna get ready to put the next neighbor in color right through here. Oh, and also I will try to sometimes get it to look like cell shading even with the same color first. I like to kind of test that before I apply the next color. So what I'm doing here is basically seeing if I can build that up even with layers of the same marker to get a dimensional kind of cell shaded look. But past that, once I'm ready to say, no, nah, I'm just gonna go to the next darker color. I'm gonna hit these same areas right here. So I'll quickly hit that and then go to that next color that going and you can tell when it's wet on white you can kind of see it a bit better you can see it blend and then also after you get it going like that it's good to bounce back to the lighter one and go past that so in between both of them basically and again moving relatively fast if you're looking for a more blended look if you like a more cell shaded look, then you probably don't have to worry as much about this. See that, you can get it to, I mean, that blended pretty good right through there. And you can really keep going back and forth. So you can hold these in your hand. I like to make sure the points are facing, I, I really don't like the other tip. It's got a chisel tip on the other side. I'm not a big fan of that one. So I like to just keep them ready to go. So I'll make sure that when I put them back in my hand there, like this you know and I hold the cap like this I mean I don't know if that matters to you but and you just go back and forth and you can keep getting it to blend uh, there's also a colorless blender but I actually prefer this for uh, most instances all right so I'm gonna leave that alone let's go over to the other side here same uh, process again you can always test this it's the neutral gray is the lighter one I'm using so and I still got this darker one but 
I don't know, I kind of like it like that. I'll go back later if I want that intensity. I'll go to this darker one. But so far I'm kind of digging, digging it just like that. So these are, I've seen a lot of people talk about them. These are comparable to um, Copics, but a fraction of the price. So Huhu was kind enough to share the set of 216 markers for me to demo for you. And it's, it's a really nice set. There's a ton of great markers in this set. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, I'm not a, a really proficient marker guy at this point, but I'd like to be. I'd like to get better with markers and colored pencils. I would really like to combine them. Uh, I've seen some gorgeous work when, you know, when people learn to combine the best of each uh, type of method, you know, uh, type of tools, it's just gorgeous stuff. You know, when you know when to put watercolor down, when to use acrylics, when to use colored pencil, you know, they all kind of have different things that are superior to one another. Um, so yeah, I got a lot to learn, but it should be fun. So again, just trying to, I feel like I needed to add a little bit more of a shadow from the, the cape as well, so maybe I'll do that. I might still go back with that darker tone just to make this look a little bit more intense. That's a pretty static, basic shot. Okay, so again, trying to make sure I got enough of this down. Now, if you're not moving fast enough to do wet on wet and you're not getting good blending because of that, just stay to one area. It's really what I should be showing you, but. Yeah, because there's no reason, especially if it's a segmentation somewhere in the, uh, the suit or the the character there's no reason that you have to push all the way into the next area of the work until you're done here so again that blend and I just feel like the lighter color is almost like your colorless blender if you do it right So again, going to jump in with the dark here, a little bit darker gray, it's got a little tinge of blue to it, which I kind of like, I think I've already mentioned that. And then, yeah, get right into these little grooves of the chest. Like so. And then jump back to the lighter color one more time and blend. Again, I'm going past the edge of the darker color into the lighter value. There we go. And again, I'm still up in the air about that darker tone. I think it could bring it out, but I'll, I'll come back to it. So now let's move on to uh, the blue. So. The other thing is this, after you've, uh, I made like a little smaller illustration of this. I tested some things and I wrote the numbers of these caps down. You gotta be organized. It's very easy to get messed up here. And there's a lot of colors of each color. So if you get the bigger set, real easy to get confused by them. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is go for the blue. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna put these in order. Again, I've got my little test swatch over here. So I don't know that I'll use much of this blue. It's pretty darn bright. I'll be honest, I had a tough time picking the uh, colors for this. That's probably the only downside to, you know, but I'm not that proficient and uh, knowledgeable in these yet. So I've got a lot of learning to do. I really don't like that one. Um, so yeah, so really that darker blue and that lighter. And then maybe this in the, the mid-tones just to like, you know, at, make it pop a little bit, but I feel like it's too much. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna start, let me start over here. Get my markers the right way. So I'm gonna start with this lighter tone.
that. And this should come back with uh, a little bit of this dark here. Back to blending. I'll see how that dries. I mean, it looks okay. It's just not, I don't know. I feel like I needed to leave uh, even a lighter tone at the very edge. And as far as I can tell, you're kind of stuck once you do that. Like you're, you're better off taking it nice and easy, light to dark. Cause once you go to dark, you're, you know, you're pretty much done for, you're stuck. So, Uh, but you can come back with white house. I'll be doing a little bit of that. Now another thing we can do is we don't have to just think about, you know, see with the chest I went with the forms around this way. It's kind of tough here to just kind of do this edging, but we could think about light to dark in a linear fashion. So for instance, Right through here, you can leave that all lighter. Or, you know, this is a lighter base color, right? And then I can just come up the side a little bit from here up and blend that way. Same thing here. Let's try that. So I'm going to push this back down now, blend back the other way. And kind of see that it's almost like they're just too close together though. It's like blending too much. But it's so weird because I guess it's the second coat because once I darken it with uh, even the same color, the same brush, the lighter tone, it gets a little darker. And then once I introduce this and say, okay, I'm going to darken it this way here and here, for instance. And then I blend. Yeah, I don't know. It's almost undistinguishable at that point, right? It's not real noticeable. But okay, we'll just roll with it. So same thing. Oh, my already had the light in my hand. All right, so start with the light. Now another thing is you can leave a little pocket of white. Let me try to do that. I just feel like that's that's going to be too much. Yeah, I don't like that. Maybe that would look better after it's all done, but I can just maybe come back with some white out here and there. And I'll probably jump on the gun and too, going too far. Uh, far as doing too much area because really you want to come back and then make sure that the area you are going to blend is wet enough. You know there's some areas and this might be a good example of it where we don't want to blend it. We want some cell shading. Sometimes the colors work well enough next to each other where that's a uh, that's that's doable. Other times you have to blend it. It just doesn't look right without it. So let's let's check that. Yeah, I kind of like it not blended, especially for this area. But I'm a big fan of cell shading too, so. But for comic art, so you don't want to, I guess you don't necessarily have to blend every single thing. 
but there's a, there's a time and a place for it. I feel like the brow area, maybe I didn't add enough for the light blue in here. So I might just hit that inside area again. Zoom up a little bit more, give you a better look at this. Okay. Oh, where's that light one? Is that that? Yep. Hit this area one more time. And this area here. Yeah, I think that works. Could it be better? Yes. Does that matter? Kinda. It can always be better. But it can always be worse. Man. That's some deep thought right there. That is some deep, deep thought. Okay, so... Right here. So again, start light. Uh, this is probably another one of those areas where I could just darken part of it. So I'm going to darken up here like that. Maybe just along the side. Just a little bit. And come back with the light one more time. Good enough. Same thing. Get this area right here. I'm not blocking this with my fat hand. Sorry. I was blessed with fat hands. It's right there. That's kind of a tough area. I want to leave just a smidge of light. Just a smidge. Back up to here. So I probably don't need to just do these small areas, especially since I'm not trying to blend as much, or if at all really. Um, but I'm trying to show you like how I would do it if I was blending. I would keep jumping back and forth, uh, making sure to really get those areas filled in before I jump to the next. I'm going to try to blend this one just a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of do like that area, but but I like this over here too. Now I let this one dry a bit. I just kind of want to see if it does blend at all if I go across that middle. Yeah, see, it's almost like once it dries, you're going to get more of that, that discernible uh, break in the line art or, you know, transition cell shading. Um, but that is... Uh, that's a good thing. Sometimes you just got to be ready for it. Just do whatever feels right. There's no right or wrong. Just do whatever you want to do. Okay, so now, yeah, and I've got to watch more videos on on using these. I'm a bit of a novice, but I'm enjoying it. That's the main thing. And the the quality is really nice. I mean, I don't feel like it's hard for me to. I really like the brush tip. I'm I'm big on the brush tip. I would not. I, I don't see myself using the other side for much of anything. Um, but does that mean that I would blow through the the brush tips quite a bit? Could be. Only time will tell. So there's that. Get this shape all kind of blocked in like this. So this one, I do feel like I'd want to see that blended. I don't want that big circle on his head, so I'm going to bring the shadow on pretty heavy to about there. And then I'm going to blend this with the lighter color. So again, trying to be wet on wet to get that to blend around. I'm going to go through the middle back and forth. Yeah, they, they blend really well. Like I could see you know, practicing with these and getting much, much better and then doing some, 
you know, almost, I don't know about painterly, but something that looks pretty darn close. But that would take a lot of practice. I'm still pretty far off from that, I guess. All right, so there's that. We got some of that blue filled in. Let's move down to here. And you see where I haven't in, added any of the darker blue. So it is it is noticeable um, once you see it by comparison. You know, like, see how dark that top spot in the head is? Um, I probably should have went a bit, bit lighter considering the, uh, the cheek here isn't nearly as dark, but it's fine. All right, so get all this kind of blocked in. Now, probably the only bad thing is since I did print this, I mean, I like the fact that it's not bleeding. Um, so one of the things I noticed on some of the traditional practice pieces I did is that wherever I used whiteout, because I'm a, I'm a hot mess when it comes to drawing traditionally, so I end up using a lot of whiteout. And when I do that, and then I ink over top of the whiteout, these seem to, to smear that really considerably. So I don't know if, I, if I'm using the wrong kind of whiteout or ink on top of the whiteout. I don't know. But all I can tell you is that it's nice doing it this way where I'm not getting any uh, bleeding or, you know, it's not smearing any of that previous work. And I'm kind of uh, disorganized. So I don't remember every spot I used white out until I go over it with my marker and it exposes it by smearing it. So that's not cool. But this way, none of that's occurring. Now, I would have to go back, if I wanted this to really pop, really look good, I could go back through the middle here and I could re-ink this. It wouldn't take long to do. I don't think I'd have to hit the line art, just the very edges. I don't know, it's something I could I could try. But, all right, so I'm gonna get some of these areas more wet before I go to blend, or put that next color down. So again, trying to get wet on white here. darker and you guys uh, feel free to comment and say you know hey this is the way I use them this is what I've learned check out a video by so-and-so you know what I mean like share Sharon's Karen so feel free if you're still following along uh, drop something in the comment section below and uh, let us know what you know what techniques you use and uh, all that good stuff. We got to compare notes if we're ever going to get good at this stuff. We are social creatures and meant to share our data with one another like a big old hive mind of insects I don't know sorry I mean to call you an insect it could be highly offensive to some people okay I personally would be uh, complimented by that insects are hard workers okay so something like that I'm going to keep filling this in, keep going back and forth. I feel like the lighter blue by itself just isn't rich enough until I do like a second or third coat on it. And then it starts to look a bit better. Okay, so now, that's much of the blue. I think I could bring that out a little bit more. Some, like I mentioned, the white out. I think the cowl looks okay. Um, now, let's go for the uh, skin tone. So I'm gonna put these back over here. And remember I had that deeper blue or that brighter blue. I don't think it needs it. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go for the skin tone. Now, this is probably gonna suck because honestly, I don't know. Skin tones are not easy. And uh, yeah, it would probably take a little bit more trial and error. It's gonna be overly saturated probably. So forgive me for that, but I could not seem to find uh, 
color light enough for what I was looking for. And I'm sure there's techniques like, like maybe like you introduce like a gray blue underneath. I couldn't get it to work, but there's uh, I know there's techniques for that. Like uh, I want to say it's acrylics where you know you use a little tinge of blue in your paint and it really helps with the shadows, the kind of five o'clock shadow look that you would see on somebody like Bruce Wayne. But uh, yeah, I don't know how to do that with markers, so forgive me. Well, I can take this and try to layer. And one thing I'm not digging with this particular color, and I don't know why, maybe it's the Bristol board smooth, and probably it's probably a more ideal paper, specifically for markers, right, that I probably should be using. Uh, I'm just used to working on this paper, and one thing I did like about it, it's thick enough where it's not bleeding through. Yeah, it's not bleeding through, which is good. Um, it's a nice thick board, so this is the Strathmore 200 series, but maybe the the type of press to this board is too you know it's soaking up the the uh alcohol markers maybe a bit too much giving us that blotchiness and i notice if i just keep coating it i can get past it but maybe that's not the right thing to be doing here you know maybe it's using up too much and what does it need to be so again check your resources check with ohuhu i'm sure they got some forms and stuff like that that you can view find some channels where they use them a lot more stuff like that but all right so i'm going to try to blend some darker tone right through here see what we get looks relatively light on camera but it does still look blotchy which i'm not digging um yeah i feel like this is a bit too red but we'll see how much we can blend it so i'm going to bring this all the way through here like that and then immediately go back to the light color, try to blend that up. Try maybe little circles, just trying to soften up that edge. Yeah, it's okay. It's not great, but again, it's not my strong suit. So, and then what I try to do too is move the brush around to some other areas because I feel like it's picking up some of that richer color. You gotta you gotta try to disperse it a little bit before you jump right back to the next. Uh, you know, go if you keep adding more of this deeper tone, I think it's just gonna pick up more and more on that lighter one. So be careful of that. Just, just remember, like anytime you go to something really powerful, like a powerful dark or, or even white out, you know, you gotta you gotta really slow your roll and try to ease into it because it's it's just you know it's more distinct. It's easier to kind of overdo. So yeah, just take your time. Slow, slow down. Relax, stay a while. Take your coat off. Kick your shoes off. Alright, so something like this. Yeah, it's just too orangish red, I don't know. But could be worse. And I think for the lip, I like sh shadow in the upper lip just a little bit, but I would like to get it, I don't want it as deep as all this, I would like to get it with just this second or third coat of this lighter color, if I can, but I don't know, maybe that's not going to be enough.
Well, I do like the control of them. Brush tips the bomb. The bomb, yo. Yeah. Just, I'm not a big fan of the tone I got there, but that's that is what it is. So uh you know what, let me try one thing. I want to see if I bring up a little bit more to this side right here, if that's gonna help, hopefully. So what's tricky about this stuff too, you gotta really kind of go for it and be brave because one fails swoop, you're like, whoop, there goes that one, I gotta start over. See, with inking, you can, you can usually save the day with, you know, some white out, but not, not with the markers as much, I don't think, but maybe erasers though, you know, some of those uh, mechanical uh, automatic erasers, I haven't tried that. Okay, so there's the skin tone. And for the eyes, actually, I actually didn't pick the color. Whoops. We go start with a really light yellow. Bright yellow. Something like that. And then to shadow that, I just want something more of a golden yellow. Like as so. Is that too much? I don't know. Is that too much? How much too much? Hmm. All right, let's go ahead and add in just a few little spots of uh, white out. I'll try the Posca pen there at the top. So let's see, just maybe a little bit off the side of the eyes here. Where else? Yeah, like anything else, I want to make sure I add this very sparingly. I mean, it looks cool, so it's kind of hard not to want to just you know, put it everywhere, but um, it can get overdone real quick. Probably plenty, huh? You want on the lip? Is that too much? I don't know. I don't know. Should I do the side of the bat logo? I'd add a little bit of depth. It looks pretty flat, so let's try that. Just a little bit off to the side of the bat logo. So there we have it folks there's our uh, colored piece of art with these ohuhu markers i gotta say i really enjoyed the quality i'm giving them two thumbs up and i really need to wash my hands now uh, but they're fantastic uh, I, I don't know what to compare it to as far as copics but i can tell you these ones are a great quality and i will be using them more if you want to check them out there will be a link in the description box below thanks so much for watching and more on the way soon